welcome to our online worship from First Lutheran Church for the ninth Sunday after Pentecost. Today again we celebrate Holy Communion. Two weeks ago I introduced the idea of this virtual form of communion. As I said then, even when we begin having in-person worship again, there are many of you who are at high risk and who should not attend such services. Because of this, we will include Holy Communion with our online worship on the first and the third Sundays every month. If we did not do this, many of you would not have the opportunity to receive the blessing of the sacrament for quite some time. And I do not with, want to withhold the means of grace from you because we simply can't be together during this time of COVID. We teach that Christ is truly present as we receive Holy Communion. He is present in, with, and under the elements of bread and wine through the promise Jesus made to his disciples, including us. How this happens is a holy mystery. And so we can trust that Christ's promise is true for the elements you bring for this Holy Communion in your homes. So, if you have not prepared already, pause this video and have a piece of bread or a cracker and a cup of wine or some other juice ready for you to use as your elements of Holy Communion when we come to that part of the service. Wherever you are in your journey of faith, you are welcome to this worship resource from First Lutheran Church. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We turn to the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sins, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Our gathering hymn is Break Now the Bread of Life.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with, with you. you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. God, your generosity waters the world with goodness, and you cover creation with abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies the body and the spirit, 
and with this food fill all the starving world through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading for the ninth Sunday after Pentecost is from Isaiah, the 55th chapter. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant. My steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you. Because the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks to you, O Christ. Our psalm is Psalm 145, verses 8 and 9 and 14 to 21. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Lord, you are good to all and your compassion is over all your works. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. You are righteous in all your ways and loving in all your works. You are near to all who call upon you, to all who call upon you faithfully. You fulfill the desire of those who fear you. You hear their cry and save them. You watch over all those who love you, but all the wicked you shall destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless God's holy name forever and ever. The second reading is from Paul's letter to the Romans, the ninth chapter. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscious con conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all, God, God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel for the ninth Sunday after Pentecost is from Matthew, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. 
when he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he, ha he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a deserted place and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. You provide in abundance. Open our hearts that we may receive the fullness of what you give and share it with our neighbors. Amen. Dear friends, in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace from God, our Creator, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In our gospel today, Jesus has some 5,000 people, plus women and children, gathered around him. And he's concerned that they have something to eat. They came to listen to him, and he has compassion for them, and he cures their sick. Mark's version of this gospel says that he also taught them many things. And when it's evening, the disciples come to Jesus and say, this is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so they may go to the villages and buy some food for themselves. But Jesus says, they don't need to go. You give them something to eat. Now, the disciples aren't exactly ready for that request. They're more like us. They count the cost. In John's version of this story, Philip answers Jesus saying, six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little bit. So what does Jesus expect that his disciples will do? That they sponsor a picnic for 5,000 hungry people? Really? I mean, that wasn't what these disciples thought they were getting themselves in for when they signed up to follow Jesus. I mean, spending a half a year's wage on one day so that these people who should have brought along a bag lunch could have a little something to eat? It just seems a bit much, doesn't it? Which is why the disciples suggested that Jesus should send the people away so that they can buy food for themselves. I mean, that's the way it should be, isn't it? Everyone needs to take care of themselves, buy their own food, take care of their own needs. People just can't expect charity to drop out of the sky every time they don't make good plans. 
You see, the disciples are, have somewhat the same mindset that we tend to fall into. When it comes to feeding hungry people, we tend to make up excuses of why we really can't do very much about it. But none of the excuses, you may notice, that the disciples make do any good with Jesus. He doesn't let the disciples off. You give them something to eat, he says. It's not an option. Those who are hungry are going to be fed. And one way or another, Jesus means to feed them. We sometimes get a little confused about what Jesus wants disciples to be doing. We have the Great Commission. Go and make disciples of all nations. And we think that means convincing people to believe in Jesus, to accept our way of thinking about God, right? But Jesus wants disciples. He wants people who live out his command to love and serve their neighbor, especially those in need. Because you see, Jesus has already taken care of the whole salvation thing. You and I don't have to worry about that at all. That's what it means to trust Jesus to trust that he has taken care of all that salvation stuff. But Jesus wants more than believers or trusters. Jesus wants disciples. Jesus wants folks who will go out and let themselves be used as God's hands and feet in the world. Disciples through whom miracles can happen because they have learned to let God's love fill them up and flow through them. Finally, in our story, Jesus has five loaves of bread and two fish. In John's version, they are freely given by a young boy who paid attention and packed a box lunch for himself, but who was willing to give it all away. And that meager meal, five loaves, two fish, offered up in faith and love was enough, enough to feed 5,000 hungry people. We scrimp and save. We store up reserves in barns and banks. We look after our own interests. We lobby for tax cuts, rebates, lower federal and state budgets. And in doing so, we create a world where the rich get richer and the poor go hungry. That's not the world Jesus wants. And it's not a world where Jesus can use us to pull off miracles. Because when Jesus says to his disciples, you give them something to eat, he means it. And he means you and me. Now, when Jesus has the five loaves and the two fish, he blesses the food and breaks it. And he gives it to the disciples. And they take care of distributing it to the crowd. The irony here is that the disciples who don't think they have any food to feed the crowd are given an abundance of food by Jesus. And then they are also given the responsibility of distributing the abundance that Jesus has provided so that the crowd can be fed. It is as though this is 
a parable of what happens in the early church when all who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. And when the distribution was done, there was not a needy person among them. And that is the challenge for us today. How is our distribution working? Does it provide enough for everyone so that there is not a needy person among us? Or does our distribution allow the wealthy to accumulate more and more wealth for themselves and leave the poor with little or nothing. Everyone, everyone got fed at that picnic in the wilderness. And there was food to spare. Jesus created an abundance. But the disciples did the distribution. And Jesus still invites his disciples to participate in the miracles that happen today. We need to recognize the abundance God provides and we need to find ways to distribute God's abundance so that all people can share and know the fullness of what God provides for our livelihood and our well-being. Part of our task is to make sure we regard all people with respect and dignity, for all people are beloved of God. The gospel, the good news for us, is not only that God provides in abundance for all our needs, but God also trusts us. God entrusts us to distribute what God provides so that all can live. So may you be part of the wisdom that learns to transform the world so that those who are hungry can eat and all people can share in the amazing abundance that God provides. Amen. The hymn of the day is Let Us Talents and Tongues Employ. Spirit, we pray for the church 
the world, and all who are in need. You take resources that appear to be meager, bless them, and there is enough. May your church trust that what you bless and ask us to share with the world is abundantly sufficient. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your bountiful creation offers sustenance and life for all creatures. Protect this abundance for the well-being of all. Reverse the damage we have caused your creation. Replenish groundwater supplies. Provide needed rain in places of drought. And protect forests from wildfires. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You offer yourself to all the nations and peoples of the earth, inviting everyone to abundant life. Bring the prophetic vision to fullness, that all nations will run to you, and that nations who do not know you will find their joy in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Hear the anguish of tender hearts who cry to you in suffering and satisfy their deepest needs. Bring wholeness and healing to those who suffer in body, heart, soul, and mind, especially Carl, Butch, Larry, Jordan, Stephen, John, Margaret, Bob, Karen, Frank, Tiffany, Diane, John, Carol, Linda, Karen, Les, Yvonne, Aldo and Bugs, Mike, Dan, Eric, Charlotte, Angel and Gideon, Betty, Faye, and Donna. Also surround the family of Daryl Hess with your comfort in this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You offer freely the fullness of salvation. Give our congregation such a welcoming heart that our words and actions may extend your free and abundant hospitality to all whom we encounter. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You gather your saints as one, united in the body of Jesus. Bring us with all your saints to the heavenly banquet. We remember with love and thanksgiving the saints we have known. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As I said in the welcome, today we will celebrate Holy Communion. And I ask that uh, you have the elements that you have uh, prepared to use for this, have them with you now. As I say the words, either have them on a table or hold them in your hands uh, as I say the blessing. And as I consecrate the elements that I have with me at the altar. So the elements that you have as you prepare to receive communion will receive that same consecration. Uh, and as you receive those elements, the bread and the wine that you have prepared, 
Jesus promises that he is with you and that as you receive the bread, you receive his body. As you take the wine, you receive his blood and he is with you for forgiveness and for his abiding presence. We pre prepare now for our Holy Communion. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of their sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The banquet of our Lord is prepared for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you always in his grace. Peace be with you. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin. bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our sending him is praise the one who breaks the darkness. Thank you. 